Hi, I'm Haley. I wish I were coming to you guys in person and not across a video, but we've had some really great response from our encouragement videos, and thank you so much for watching. A lot of you have wondered what does Pastor Ben see when he's sitting here in this chair videoing? Well, we'd like to give you a little taste of what he sees. Say, let's pray and see if we can find it, and I uh, do the same thing with golf balls. Sometimes I do it in the store with my kids. When I lose, I, I do it all the time. Lord, I know you know where it is. I need help today, but yeah. maybe you're in a position where you didn't just for the season or uh, maybe hope lost, which could be hope. Uh, Psalm 31, I've been reading, reading the Psalms because I find that they have times and he had to walk through his feet. It seems like a place in which, and I love the first parting, in the first parting, he just said, Lord, I've come to you for definitely today. We're looking at him, God, we need your help. We need life or even my, my mind, my action. And he goes on to just say, I find my trust, my distress, and he's just saying my... My tears have blurred my eyes, withering array. I'm dying with grief. But he says this, but I am trusting in you, my God. My future is in your man. I think if there's one thing that we even do today, just to remind ourselves, God, that my... Welcome to your Thursday encouragement with Pastor Ben. Hey, what a great week. No, actually not a great week. Uh, Haley, what are you doing? Put the Cheetos away or share them. Mmm, perfect catch nice. for a Thursday. It's getting better already. Thank you very much. Okay, welcome to your Thursday encouragement with Pastor Ben. Hey, what a wonderful day. The sun is shining and we are still alive here in Central Oregon. Ray Johnston is one of my, he's one of my heroes and uh, he's a pastor down in Sacramento. He probably doesn't even know that I exist, but he's my hero. And uh, I just remember connecting with him, reading some of his books, going to conferences and seeing him. I've actually met him several times and every time I've met him, I just love that he's a complete optimist, that he is a pastor and leader, uh, and he likes to have fun. He really feels like church should be enjoyable, and that's something that we've always shared. He he describes an optimist himself, or I would even say myself, as, as a big three-foot balloon full of air that you've pulled down to the bottom of a swimming pool, and all you have to literally do is let go, and what's gonna happen is it'll float all the way up to the top. There's no way that you can keep that balloon submerged down in water. Man, I, I resonate with that as an optimist. And I know some of you are watching and you're, uh, you're not optimists and it's okay that uh, maybe you're a pessimist and uh, you see things from a different lighter perspective. But today I wanna give you an optimist perspective. And uh, if you're an optimist, you'll enjoy this. If you're a pessimist, you should enjoy this. I'm gonna ask you to try and enjoy it for just a moment. Uh, but an optimist point of view, I know we're sitting here in this waiting time of like, is phase one ever gonna start? When do we get to reopen things? What's it gonna look like? Uh, and reading in the news, it just seems like we're just waiting and waiting and waiting for more information, but we're all sitting here in this waiting period going, what in the world is happening? Uh, the other day I was doing some math homework with my son Titus, and it was interesting. He was doing a kind of a decimals and percentages and numbers, and he was wanting to do stuff on COVID. So we started looking up all the information in Deschutes County on COVID, and what we determined was there's 197,000, I guess 692 people population in Deschutes County. 75 uh, were infected with COVID and zero people had died, which means the total numbers of people that have recovered is 197,600 and whatever it was, 92. And I just have to step back for a moment and say, thank you, Jesus, that in our community, when we're not experiencing a huge loss of death, uh, of mourning, and uh, and, and I, know, I know a lot of people that I'm talking with around the world, man, they're not just dealing with COVID or dealing with restrictions, they're now dealing with loss and pain and grief. Uh, and I just, man, just this week I had to stop and say, thank you, Lord, for passing over our community. I know we just celebrated Passover and it was really powerful, but I wanna remind you that God, God is actually at work in our 
county, in our community, and he's doing good things. I've heard amazing stories of people being healed, uh, of people financially being blessed, and they thought they were going to lose everything, and it came back, and the Lord has restored to people. It's so amazing to see what happens in the lives of those believers that hold on to God for hope, and that hold on to Him in faith to say, God, you will sustain us. We're seeing God more than sustain. I've, I've talked to people who said, I'm, I think I'm actually going to be better financially. I've talked to others who said, I got a stimulus and why, what do I do with it? What do I need? I don't need it. How can I help somebody else? And so we've had so many people, especially that I've contacted with that are just like, Hey, I want to give it away. Who would I help? And how could I do this? And I love the generosity in times of just crisis and turmoil. Um, so I want to remind you that the Lord has been so good. The spirit of death has even passed over our community. We have people that are, that are better, that are healed, uh, that are walking in wholeness and freedom. And so we have just, I feel like, even walked through something unscathed. Thank you, Jesus, for watching over our community and our lives. And we want to continue to pray for those that we know. A lot of you have relationships and friendships, family, in other parts of the world that have been devastated by COVID. We're sitting here in a great place, and the Lord has really done good things in us. This uh, psalm I've been reading this week, and I feel like several times this week, the Holy Spirit keeps reminding me, go read Psalm 138, and something else happens. Go read Psalm 138, and then something else happens. Go read Psalm 38. And so I've just been going back to this psalm, and uh, this is in the New Living Translation, and, and it says this. I want to read it to you because this is an encouragement. I give you thanks, O Lord, with all of my heart. I will sing of your praises before every other God. I bow before your holy temple as I worship, and I praise your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness. I love this. Your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. We've seen it before. We're like, you go to get a loan and they say, oh, it's backed by the FDIC or it's backed by this. I love this. Is that all of your promises, God, are backed by the honor of your name, meaning he's never once failed to come through on a promise in my life and in your life and the life of his people, and it's backed by his good name. As soon as I pray, you answer me, and you encourage me by giving me strength. That happened to me a couple times this week where I'm sitting there praying, crying out to the Lord like, Lord, would you be here in this moment? And it just says this, as soon as I pray, you answered me, and you encouraged me by giving me strength. Every king in all the earth will thank you, Lord, for all of them will hear your words. Yes, they will sing about the Lord's ways, for the glory of the Lord is very great, Though the Lord is great, he cares for the humble, and he keeps distance from the proud. Though I'm surrounded by troubles, you will protect me from the anger of my enemies. You reach out your hand, and the power of your right hand saves me. The Lord will work out his plans for my life. I love this, and I have to hold on to this this week, that the Lord will work out his plans for your life and for my life this week. For your faithful love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon me. For you made me, and you sustain me, and you bring us health, and you bring us life. Man, I am so thankful to go through this season with really the Holy Spirit as a guide in our lives, in my life, and in your life, to just walk us through piece by piece, day by day. When desperation comes, and when heartache comes, when loss and grief come, we literally can just reach out to the Lord and say, I need help now. I need help now. And in moments of crisis, he comes and he brings supernatural peace, supernatural provision, stuff that, that we didn't plan for, stuff that we couldn't account for. He literally brings in the moment. And I know this week, uh, you've probably paced with us. We had a little bit of a, a whoops this week with our little boy, Isaiah, who jumped off a bunk bed and broke his arm. And uh, I just know, like, as we were driving to the hospital and uh, with the bone bulging and everything going wrong, it's like, you know, I had reached out to Don who put us on a prayer chain and so many people reached out, we're praying for you, we're for you. And it was amazing just to see, not only in my life, but in, in my little boy's life, just the peace that came over him in that moment. He just literally sitting in a hospital bed, watching a cartoon, joking with me, laughing and joking, and uh, why his arm's completely out of place. And, uh, and, just to, and I'm just sitting there going, this isn't him. This is so supernatural. And I know in my life, 
I'm seeing it all the time, just that desperation, reach out to God and supernatural wisdom, peace, provision. And I hope that you're seeing it in your life. I wanna encourage you to continue to press into God this week, to know that this too will pass, that we will be in a better day soon, and that God will and is seeing you through every single hardship in this time. In fact, in the end, you will come out better than you went into it because God always fulfills his promises. They are backed by his good name. This week, hang in there. Good things are coming and you can do this. I'm never coming in late again on a Tuesday. I'm Pastor Ben. Welcome to your Thursday Encourage. Three. You said three. I better get that out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. Jeez. laughs>